So here are our design principles. So uh, first one here we have is balance. So balance is about the the weight of the work. Um, typically, so if you have something that's symmetrical, right, it'll be balanced on both sides. But if you look at this here, um, this still feels sort of balanced because although this shape is bigger and heavier on the left, because this one's up and to the uh, to the right, it's it's raised up. It sort of balances it out a little bit. Um, so that's the idea of, of balance. Um, contrast is just the difference from one element to another. Uh, so in a really kind of explicit way, you know what I mean? From you can have one uh, one shape and color against another shape and color, and the, the larger the difference, right, the more uh, striking it will be, as opposed to this, which is a little bit less or not as um, as not as different. Okay. Uh, but contrast can also be with colors. You're probably familiar with like complementary colors, right? Where you have colors that are the opposite in the color wheel. There's a lot more contrast with those as opposed to colors that are analogous. Um, so you could contrast through a bunch of different ways. Um, value is just one of them. Emphasis just means you try to have one element inside of the composition that sticks out more than the other. So for example, here, which one are you looking at? You're looking at the red one. We're just using color in order to draw emphasis to this specific element. Uh, I mentioned it earlier, but the, the greatest thing you can do, because let's say you have a piece of text, think about ways that you can you can emphasize that text. You can make it bigger, right? You can make it bold. You could use a fancy font. You could change the color. But the number one thing you can do more than anything else is give it space. The more negative space that's around something, the more emphasis it will have. Um, that's why you always see these large, especially like more modern graphic design and websites that they will have a lot of breathing room. They might have an image and they might have a little bit of text, but it's mostly negative space. Uh, movement just gives the, the impression that there is movement in the image. Pretty obvious, right? So here I just kind of did this shading thing, uh, but it also creates movement in it. So it helps your eye move across uh, the, the composition. Pattern, just repeating elements over and over again. So you can see this is just a consistently the same uh, image sequence over and over. Uh, that's pattern. Pretty obvious. Patterns are really useful things. So there's certain things you want to have patterns. Um, so uh, for instance, if you're doing a multi-page thing, it might be good to always have a horizontal rule at the top and then on the next one and the next one. Because what that does is that once they learn the pattern, the, the person learns the pattern, they, they don't have to think about it again. They just understand it. Um, but it can also be boring. You know, uh, if it's just the same pattern over and over again, it's not it's not particularly uh, appealing. Um, rhythm is sort of like I like to look at this is one of those things I always didn't really understand when I was in college and they explained it to me. Uh, but I would look at it like it's music. Right. So a pattern, if we were looking at music, right, would just be bump, 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 like a metronome. It's boring, but it does have a pattern or it could be da, 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 da. you could change however you want. Rhythm, though is like pattern where but it varies so it's like i'm not a musician but there's a variation and it moves faster and slower it's almost like a combination of these two in some ways um so just like you have rhythm in dance and in music you can have rhythm inside of a composition so if we're looking at this it's not the greatest example some of these are closer together some are farther apart and it makes your eye move faster and slower throughout the composition um, and then the last one here is unity. Sometimes it can be referred to as harmony. Um, the idea is that you try to have, or cohesion, um, you try to have um, all of the, the composition in general, you want it to seem uh, together, that it's combined in some way, that they match, right? So a really common way of doing that is to use a similar color palette, right? Everything in this is orange. It uses the same patterns. Um, it's got the same shape, um, things like that, that help it stick together. So unity would kind of be the opposite of variety, right? Variety would be kind of like contrast, right? So um, unity is the opposite of that. You can make things very unified, but they typically will be boring. So usually it's a balance of trying to have it be, you know, have enough contrast and variety and, you know, novel things with consistency and cohesiveness and, you know, an understandable pattern. Um, that's usually what you're trying to balance. I look if you look at it like food, right? If I just give you noodles with just plain white sauce, it's a little bit boring, right? If you just ate that all the time, but I could throw some like peppers and some like other spices in there, it gets really good. Um, but once I start throwing in like chocolate covered peanuts and jelly, 
and some other stuff. Well, now it's way too far, right? Those don't match. They're not, they, they don't work together, right? Lots of contrast, but it's too much. Now it's not cohesive anymore. And that's kind of what you do with your artwork. You want to find things, you want to have things that are interesting, but are still, but still work together. 